it's like living in a Twilight Zone episode or uh, The Matrix that I'm somebody without a college education, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, I'm proud of it. I was already successful starting my own media operation by my own bootstraps when I was 21 years old. I'm 40 now. I could have gone to college. I could have got a degree. I could have gone and made $100,000 a year. I could have played ball with the system. I made my own way, my own path. That's what I'm known for doing, trailblazing. But trailblazing, it was more like a train wreck. I just had the will to not want to be a slave and the will to fight ty ty tyranny. And when they harassed me and physically attacked me and demonized me and stalked me and threatened me, that only made me fight harder. So I know how powerful you are. A lot of you are better looking than I am, smarter than I am, better spoken than I am, have better oratory skills than I have. You may not think you have them because you haven't attempted to use your skills yet. When you get in the arena, you get stronger, folks. I've been in the arena forged in the fires of grassroots warfare against tyranny and control freaks and scum jellyfish everywhere for 19 years. Two years before that, in the proto Tea Party libertarian movement. I went and put out yard signs for Pat Buchanan. I went out and knocked on doors and canvassed. I went out and gave speeches at caucuses. I went out and did, I tried everything I could. And you know what it's done in 19 years? Changed the landscape, created a whole new way of looking at things for so many. So I'm not bragging. I've come face to face now with the fact that I have changed history because of you. Like a horse and carriage, our listeners from the beginning resonated and taught me, the old timers, the veterans, the patriots, the engineers, the government people, the police officers, gave me the intel, the firefighters, Deputy Fire Chief Vic Vreeland, Vietnam veteran in his own right, great guy, took me under his wing, helped me for a year, start InfoWars. I've told the crew to get a hold of Vic Vreeland. I think he lives in Bastrop now. Get a hold of him and his wife. I want to take him out to dinner. I want to get him in here. Taught me so much like my dad taught me and my grandfather's taught me. And here I am after 19 years, another testament to all of us working together. We have savaged the enemy. We have held back their plans. I'm not bragging. It just needs to be said how precious the info war is. And everything we do here and my crew and my operation, we're making history. And it shows that when good men and women stand up and keep coming, the founder of the Texas Rangers famously said, a man in the wrong can't stand up against a man in the right who keeps on a coming. You got to keep on a coming. These people are cowards. We're fighting their scum. And I have a desire to see them fall. You have a desire to see your football team win. You have a desire to see your son or daughter get an A plus and a test, great. But I see these parents that put their kids under so much pressure to have the top grades and get into the best college and, and their kids, you know, some of them make it, some of them commit suicide, others go to drugs. Parents, you should care about your kids being honorable. You should care about your children being healthy. You should care about them upholding their family name and then everything else will follow. You should be with your children at the homeless shelters if you want to raise them right. I'm speaking to myself here right now. There's a lot I need to do. I know I need to do. You need to be out there. You need to be teaching them to be healthy and not drink fluoridated water and eat GMO. You need to be teaching them, yeah, good, get, get good grades, but at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. What matters is just be true and be satisfied and be good and to love God. And also stand up for yourself. Parents tell their kids, don't fight back. Kids get in more trouble when they get beat up if they fight back than if they lay on the ground. And I, I look at how my parents raised me, and it was the opposite of what people raise folks now. And maybe it was reckless, but it was bad. I wouldn't do it now, but in a way it was good. Oh, you want a motorcycle? Sure, go have one. You want a moped? Go have one. You're getting beat up at school. We better fight back harder. And I look at the day how they raise the kids, it's the opposite. I raise my kids different. Oh, how the generations change. 
I just got an Americana upbringing. Where is America? How do we find what made us exceptional? Your calls are coming up. Cruz quote again. I, I already played this. The article's up on Infowars.com. But it's so important that I want to go back over the stakes here that you've got 40 plus members of the Democratic Party in the Congress already co-sponsoring a bill that when you read it ends the First Amendment. This is authoritarianism. These people are dangerous. These are Kim Jong-un wannabes. Let's go to that clip. When you think it can't get any worse, it does this year. I'm sorry to tell you. The United States Senate is going to be voting on a constitutional amendment to repeal the First Amendment. I am telling you, I am not making this up. Senator Chuck Schumer has announced the Senate Democrats are scheduling a vote on a constitutional amendment to give Congress the plenary power, the unlimited authority to regulate political speech. Because elected officials have decided they don't like it when the citizenry has the temerity to criticize what they've done. They don't like it when pastors in their community stand up and speak the truth. And it makes their lives inconvenient when they're not standing for principle and actually that's pointed that's out right. back home. Full clip, full speech and I'll note this amendment at Infowars.com. Shifting gears, uh, this story's on the left-hand side of RudgeReport.com if you want to find it. Actress TSA Pat Down gives me a head orgasm. Actress Molly Shannon characterized invasive TSA pat-downs as some kind of fetishistic sexual experience. They've had rappers, rockers, others all say this to push it. During an appearance on the Conan O'Brien show this week, when she said that the sensation of a TSA agent groping her gave her a head orgasm. Really, when they do it to small children, it's called pedophilia, which Shannon explains how she opted out of an x-ray scanner while traveling to New York and was given the option to have the pat-down I shouldn't call her a witch, maybe she's just ignorant, to be conducted in public or in a private room. It already felt like a spa experience or a massage, said Shannon. Oh, yeah, it's real great. Well, let's go ahead and actually hear from her instead of me quoting her. Being ironic is what she's really doing. She doesn't like it. But women, especially on average, decide if they're being suppressed, not all of them, but statistically, to just go with it and say they like it. And it's on record, women are more susceptible to what's known as the Stockholm Syndrome. Not bashing women, it's just a, it's a survival mechanism. But see, they're using our own survival mechanisms against us where we won't survive in the end. They're just training us how to be prisoners. That story's also up on Infowars.com. Actress TSA Pat Down gives me a head orgasm. We're going to come right back, right back to your phone calls, and then the economic news, the Al-Qaeda news, the Al-Sharpton news, the Memorial Day meteor shower that's coming, and Obama... To be christened as a dictator, give Harry Reid the crook from...